kato katoa, ko PJ aho, ko kaya ko fao mo mo kiti fare kararehi o tamaki makoro. Hey guys, my name is PJ and I'm one of the conservation learning facilitators over at Auckland Zoo. And I'm really excited to be back for another episode of Creative Kaitiaki, the space where we get a bit crafty and take time to connect with some of the momo takitaki of Aotearoa. Today I am actually working at home, so I've just gone for a stroll down the end of my road to explore my local bush track and the wetlands that run through it, because today we're exploring the mysteries of the world's largest freshwater eel, and that's the New Zealand longfin eel. First of all, let's go check in with Cornell to see what he can tell us about these long, slithery fish that live here in Aotearoa with us. My name is Cornell. I'm one of the conservation learning facilitators here at Farikarareke Otama Kimakoto, Auckland Zoo. The Māori name for eel is tuna. Tu -na. Tuna. You can try that at home if you like. Really simple word to practice. There are many stories in Te Ao Māori or the Māori world that talk about tuna. One of them is there was a giant tuna that uh, was frightening the wives of Maui, our Maori superhero. So what Maui did to punish that giant tuna was to chop it in half, and half of it landed into the moana and became moiro, the conga eel. The other half fell into our rivers and became tuna, the freshwater eel. That's just one story from Te Maori that connects the giant eel of the past into our eel of the freshwater and our eel of the moana. Tēnā koutou katoa, kia ora tātou, kia pai te rā. Tēnā pai kōnau, kia ora e kōra mai kōnau toka ingoa. And today we're going to learn more about the long fin tuna here in Aotearoa. The long fin tuna is the largest freshwater eel species in the world. They can grow up to 30 to 40 kilograms when fully grown and 2 metres long. And they're endemic to us here in Aotearoa. Tuna live in freshwater awa and roto all around Aotearoa. They can live in these areas for up to 60 years. They like to live in rivers with lots of vegetation or bank overhangs so that they can stay in the shade. Long fin tuna are named for their long fin they have along their back, which helps them swim wherever they need to go, including upstream. Tuna are covered in a layer of mucus, which makes them slippery and slimy. Although I wouldn't want to get too close to these creatures because they have very sharp teeth and a very strong bite. Tuna have an incredible sense of smell which they use for hunting instead of their eyesight because they hunt in the evenings. They also have very sensitive skin which helps them locate prey as they're swimming around. Tuna have a fascinating life cycle. Did you know that they only breed once at the end of their life? The adult tuna travel from their freshwater habitat here in Aotearoa to the Pacific Ocean. From there, they travel north to the warm tropical waters near the Pacific Islands like Tonga. Here they lay many eggs which hatch into algas. These teeny tiny baby eels will then drift on currents back to Aotearoa. Then they make their way to freshwater Oroto and Awa where they will live the rest of their lives just like their parents do. Now that we've learned more about tuna, let's check back in with PJ and he's going to show us how to grow our very own tuna. Cheers Naya! There's definitely a lot that I didn't know about these tuna that live in our backyard. Now, one of my favourite ways to connect even more with nature is through art, so I'm going to show you how you can draw your very own long thin eel. So grab out a bit of paper and whatever you prefer to draw with. I love my markers, so I've got out a few different shades of grey, black and blue, and a couple of calligraphy pens. And I've also grabbed a couple of heavy rocks just to hold down my piece of paper so it doesn't move around. Now you grab whatever you prefer, whatever you need, and we will make a start. Starting with my lightest shade of grey, I'm going to sketch in the base shapes. First of all, doing two long overlapping sausages, just like this. And then a big tilted egg shape on top for the head. I add a little wedge down the bottom for the tail, and a C shape either side of the head 
for our eel's gills, and I want that front one a little bit bigger than the back. Add in an eye, and a big frowny lip, and then two little nostrils which kind of poke out a little bit. Now we can join up those two sausage shapes on the side with a line like this, and then go in and add our fins. Now we want a long fin going along the eel's back, and another fin going along their underside on their belly. Now this bit can be a little confusing because we've drawn our tuna in a slithery position. So if you need, just take your time and slow down the video if you need to follow along. Alright, well that's step one done. It's time for us to move on and add some colour. So taking that same light grey, we're going to shade in all the fins and our tuna's mouth. And once you've done that, we can find a darker grey for the rest of the tuna's body. Before I colour in the main body, I like to outline all of the other shapes that we've created, and that just helps me define where I'm putting the darker colour and prevent it from bleeding into that lighter colour on the fins. Just like this. Once you're done, you can colour it in as quickly or as slowly as you need, just being careful you don't go outside the lines. And this is the step where you can also fix up the overall shape of your eel if it's not quite looking right. Now once your eel is completely filled in with grey, you can grab out a black marker and start outlining everything. I like to go around the entire body, as well as all the individual body parts like the mouth and the, the fins. And this just helps to sharpen all of those sections up, because when we're using markers, Sometimes the colours can bleed into one another. So this just helps make it pop and cleans everything up. I'll take a smaller black marker to add extra details, like all these lines along the fins, which just help show us which direction the eel might be moving in and what angle we're looking at it from. I'll add some lines to those pectoral fins on the cheeks and a line in the mouth. Then get out my darker grey marker Add some shadows under the face and in the bends of the eel's body. Again, just to help show the motion and the angle of the eel's body. Now, I do find that this eel is a bit dull in colour, so I want to brighten up the page. Maybe have it swimming in nice, clean water using this blue marker. Alright, I always add in some extra dots and squiggles, maybe some cross-hatching, but this is totally optional. It's just a personal preference. Um, I like to doodle. Alright, well I would love to see whatever you guys create, so please do share your work online using hashtags like Creative Kaitiaki and Create with Auckland Zoo. Alright, let's go check in with Catherine because she's got a lot to tell us about what's going on with tuna out in the wild. Kia ora tamarikima, ko Catherine Toku Ingoa. You will have heard from Nayo and PJ that longfin eels live in the freshwater habitats of Aotearoa. Places like wetlands and streams and rivers are all really important habitats. They live there until later in their life when they head off to the deep sea to spawn. Tuna are called bioindicators because they can tell us something about a habitat. Tuna can only live in freshwater habitats that are healthy. Unfortunately, Overfishing, pollution and habitat loss are all having a big impact on the number and size of longfin eels that we find in our freshwater habitats. Longfin eels in Aotearoa are now at risk and their numbers are still decreasing. One of the biggest threats to longfin eels in Aotearoa, New Zealand is the different types of pollution that enter our waterways. Most people know about things like plastic pollution, but there are others as well. Things like sewage, runoff from farms and even pollution from our roads. All of these different types of pollutants can damage the waterways that are so important to tuna and it can also cause them to move away from their homes to be able to find places that are less polluted and have more food for them. Another big threat to tuna is habitat loss. Over the last 150 years, we've lost 90% of our wetlands in Aotearoa, leaving just 10% of these precious habitats left. As the number of humans living in Aotearoa continues to grow, we have needed more spaces to live in. So people have turned wild spaces into places for humans to use by changing them in different ways. 
This means that eels are not able to move around as freely as they need to. There's less spaces for them to live in and fewer places for them to find food as well, which makes it really hard for them to survive. Tuna are Taonga species in Aotearoa. This means that they are treasured and valuable. Remember, longfin tuna are endemic to New Zealand, which means they're not found in the wild anywhere else in the whole world. They are so special, and it is very important that we try our best to look after them. Here are a few ideas of how you could be kaitsiaki for tuna in Aotearoa. Be mindful when you're visiting different habitats like wetlands. Be careful not to trample on the plants or hurt the things that live there. Remember, everything is interconnected and all the parts of the ecosystem work together to be healthy. We should also all be trying to fish in a sustainable way, both in the ocean and in our freshwater systems, so that we are only ever taking what we need and not more. This means that there will be enough for the future. Maybe you could adopt a wetland near your home, school or kura. You could clean it up by picking up rubbish, help to plant some new vegetation, or maybe even do a biodiversity survey to see what plants and animals are living there. If any of you help members of your whanau to wash their car, you could do this on the lawn instead of the driveway, so that the chemicals filter into the ground and don't run off into gutters and into our waterways. Finally, have a corridor. Talk to your family and friends about what you've learned in this video. Spread the message. The world needs all of us to be kaitiaki. Next, we're going to check in with Kat for our craft activity. Have fun, Dominikuma! Thank you so much, Catherine. It's amazing to hear what we can do to be kaitiaki for the tuna here in New Zealand. Kia ora, ko Kat toko ingoa. And today we're going to do some kitchen craft, a bit of a science experiment, to learn a little bit more about the tuna. Now, as Naya mentioned, tuna are covered in a mucousy layer, and this layer helps them move and feel in those dark waters that they like to call home. And that's why it's really important if you visit the tuna at Auckland Zoo or if you see any in the wild, that we don't touch or pet them because this layer is very sensitive and has a lot of feeling receptors in it. So we're going to try and recreate their mucousy layer. We're going to make some ublex slime today. And for this activity, you are going to need some corn flour. You are going to need a cup, about half a cup, to a quarter cup of water, a bowl and a spoon. Now you might like to turn your oobleck slime into a colour so you might want a little bit of food dye, but be aware that it might stain your fingers in. Now this is a really messy activity, so you also might like to do this outside so you don't make a lot of mess in your kitchen. So we're going to have a go now at making this amazing mucousy layer and see what it might feel like to touch a tuna without actually touching them. How cool is that? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our one cup and we're going to fill it up with our corn flour and place that in our bowl. Once we've done this, we're going to add a little bit of water, just a little bit at a time and really mix in between different times. Now, it might be good actually to have someone help you during this process. You might have uh, one person pouring the water while the other person is stirring. Now, occasionally my cat came along and I had to tell him to get away because he was trying to help me out. But I don't think he would have been very good at doing this. All right, now once you feel like you've got a great consistency, that you feel like it looks more like a liquid now as opposed to that corn flour dryness, you can actually have a feel. See if it feels right. You should be able to sink your fingers into it if you go gently and you should be able to hit it and it stay quite firm. Wow, here is your amazing oobleck slime. Well, imagine if our whole body was covered in this. I don't know if I'd like it, but for our tuna, it's a very important adaptation, something that they need to be successful in their habitat. Well, I'm going to keep playing here. Back to you, PJ. Cheers, Kat. That slime looks super fun to play with and pretty easy to make as well. I might have to head home and try it out for myself. Well, 
I hope you guys have had an absolutely fantastic time getting a bit creative today and having a all about our endemic tuna that live here in the wetlands in Aotearoa. Now keep a close eye out for tuna next time you're visiting your local Awa, Oroto or even Ngarepo because they're absolutely everywhere. If you do want more activities or craft ideas, swim on over to our website because there's a lot sitting there and we always love to see the work that you do. So be sure to share your work online using the hashtags Creative Kaitiaki or Create with Auckland Zoo. And we'll be sure to see you at the zoo next time you visit. Until then, kakite ano kaitiaki ma?